All right, so the next part of the, the supplies and measurements we're going to talk about is a food guide that is designed to go on the fridge, but I am going to go through it a little bit with you here. The chart is meant to show, just like we talked about babbling uh, choices as you kind of start really falling off the wagon to both sides and then narrowing and improving choices. So the bottom layer is good choices on a ketogenic diet. Uh, the next one gets to better choices on a ketogenic diet. And then the top one gets to best choices. And the way those are categorized out is if you look at the people that are in ketosis, I mean, ketogenic diet is not about the food. It's about the chemistry going on inside your body. But the foods dictate that. So it's not that it's absent of the, you know, what are you eating? It's that when the bar says keto, just because it said keto doesn't mean that. And what and there are a certain number of carbs that some insulin resistant patients can use. And then there are others that they can't even come close to that or they'll be out of ketosis. Gotcha. So looking at poultry and eggs, what would you eat? Um, definitely eggs. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um... And those are in the best category, right? They'll yeah. stay all the way along. Um, I do eat a lot of chicken breast. Okay. Um, so that's kind of lower on the chart. Um, and we do wings as a family quite often. Okay. So why do you think the chicken's in the good and the breast and the, and the wings are in the better? So why do you think that? Less fat. Right. Uh, and so which part of that chicken are you eating more of? More of the meat versus the, the skin. And when you have the wings, you're definitely more skin and right. fat. Exactly. Okay, let's go on to pork. What, where, what do you like out of that one? Um, ribs. Oh, good. Brisket. Yep. Definitely ground beef. We do that a lot as well. That's really good. Yeah. What about spam? What about spam? Have you eaten that? <laughs> no. No, really? <laughs> we'll fix that. Spam is that part of the, the, the pork that's... It's not pretty on the table, mm -hmm. but it is full of nutrients. Mm. Okay, how about fish and fish and shellfish? What do you what would you eat off of that? Salmon. Okay. Um, tuna. Okay, out of a can. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and snapper. Oh, okay. Perfect. <laughs> Veggies and fruit. <laughs> what would you eat out of that? Um, oh, definitely avocados. Um, cabbage, kale, most of these up here is what we do. Brussels sprouts, yes. Okay, okay. Olives, cauliflower, and we do pretty, we do all this. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever tried rhubarb. Oh, well, welcome to South Dakota. It's kind of a weed, but it tastes good. <laughs> How about dairy? Um, heavy whipping cream <clears throat> and coffee always. Hard cheeses, um, sour cream. Um, I didn't realize whole milk was good. Yeah, so it's in the good. So again, you're looking for, what I see happen over time is that heavy cream, mm -hmm. uh, people just pile it on. And I want you to do that at the beginning, um, but that can't last forever. Mm -hmm. It's not terrible. It's just that when I would count my own carbs at the beginning when I was really strict about counting everything that went in, it still has a few carbs. So I didn't have any carbs in the cream but in the milk, you've got some carbs. Yeah, carbs. And I'm like saving carbs for all my favorite stuff at the beginning. Because mm -hmm. I was, you know, like anybody, you, you wish for the things that comfort you. And so the whole milk's still there. If you have to pick between a milk, you just want, uh, you want fat in it because it does create satiety. Mm -hmm. It does create that sense of, oh, I feel a little better. But um, where you won't get that with a low fat milk, mm -hmm. uh, without a lot of it. So then you end up with the volumes of the carbs without really getting the hormones shut off. Any uh, of the sour cheeses, like um, the feta cheese or the blue cheese, do you ever eat those? Feta cheese, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah there's a couple of vitamins that are, sp are particularly high in feta cheese. Uh, let's go to fats and oils. Um, MCT oil. Okay, you've got some of that mm -hmm. in your pack, okay. Um, mayonnaise. Butter. Mayonnaise, butter. So yeah, butters and mayonnaise, uh, what those are really used for is, you've been on a keto diet before, that it's very satisfying food, but you need some lubricants um, uh, to get the food in. And so in my family, what that turned into were dipping things. So we would dip our meat in like mayonnaise with a little bit of you know, pepper and some spicy sauce or something. We would make our own little dips because I wanted the fat and when you start, oh, what do I make these dips out of? The sour cream and the mayonnaise became like, I got the big jars eventually. Cause I'm like, I just keep making this. And if the, I would make the recipe or, you know, make a batch and say, how did that turn out? And then if they ate it, then I'd do it again. But if they didn't, I'd just throw it away because uh, you're trying to sort to get to the dips that your family will eat. Mm -hmm. Nuts and seeds. Uh, macadamia nuts. Oh yeah. Definitely a favorite. Mm -hmm. um, pecans, walnuts, and almonds and peanuts. Yeah. 
So yeah, the, as you look at the, the good, better, best, the top ones on the list are the chia seeds, uh, which have a very low glycemic response. The peely nuts, which are from the Philippines, very buttery nut, Whew, a beautiful buttery nut. But I don't think you'll ever find those at our local grocery store. <laughs> uh, but macadamia nuts, you will. They are high in fat, a really good, you can you know, roast them with a really good, crisp, nutty flavor. All right, so what about drinks and alcohol? What, what types of drinks um, on there do you drink? Water, okay. sparkly water. Okay. Um, tea I can do, black coffee. Not, not a coffee drinker? Okay. I am a coffee drinker, but with cream. Okay. <laughs> Perfectly have it all you want at this stage. Do you do cold brews or you do hot hot coffee? A summer we usually do cold. Yeah. In the winter, especially now, will be hot coffee. Hot coffee. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other things. Have you ever made kombucha? No, I have not. Oh, okay. We'll we'll walk through that because uh, I think that's a good place to just learn about what's happening in a kombucha um, process. They're a great substitute for repopulating a gut bacteria and just a good good drink actually. Um, how about alcohol? What's your favorite alcoholic drink? Rum. Yeah, well, there you go. No carbs in rum. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you put with your rum? I uh, usually a sparkly water and some flavoring, like uh -huh. a coconut water flavoring. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, that's, uh, that's not bad. All right. How about those sweets? Because they did make the list. Read out loud what the good sweets are. The good ones are stevia, monk fruit, and erythritol. Right. Okay. So of those, do you use any of those? Stevia and monk fruit. Yeah, the monk fruit is, uh, I like to think of it as the diamonds in uh, artificial sweeteners. And it's because the least amount of processing comes from it. It actually is a, a fruit where monks pray, which is like China, Thailand area. And so all they would do it is they'd crack it open, they'd boil water, and they'd just drink the sugar water. Okay. And, but there's no sugar response. So it's, it's actually very low processing. It's a very good sweetener. All right, go to the good, or the better. What other sweeteners are better? Cinnamon. Yes. Which I would never think about that one. Right. And a sweetener. Um, and then dark chocolate, 75% yeah. or more. Right, the cacao uh, getting to that. So what you're looking for is how can you turn on the sweetness in your mouth without actually putting a sugar or a sugar substitute in it? And I will tell you, when you come through the journey of keto eating, the the first phase, you're going to like cinnamon schminnamon. I, you put it with a bunch of, you know, white frosting from you know, the local bakery, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, no, no. The actual cinnamon sweetens the sweetness even sweeter. Um, but you, that it's like so far up on the echelon when the, the whole diet is filled with sweetness that you can't appreciate that cinnamon added a sweetened taste no, to things. No, never. Right. All right. What's the best sweetener? None. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, people are like, what? That's a cheat. And I'm like, no, really, the sweet taste in life should be this random, very infrequent celebrations. And you're not going to get there tomorrow. And I went, I mean, I think every patient, every person goes through the journey of a little bit of sweetness, um, and then they fall in the ditch. And then they got, they're stuck with their hubcaps up to the, you know, mud up to the hubcaps, and they need a support group to get them out again. Um, so those, those resets are because sugar became their fix that sugar became their comfort sugar was their rescue and you know you're at the best phase when you're like yeah I like the taste but it's not my comfort and that's a conquering of food which is in the future there you go the reason that's put on the fridge is that the most tempting moments in life are twofold number one when you're going into that refrigerator mm -hmm. and you're like oh I want something well look uh, look at this. But eventually, keto diet is not like it's really advanced and super complicated. It's just weird. Like, what do you mean chicken skin chips? What do you mean pepperoni as the chip to dip in the avocado? What do you mean? You know, those types of things are mind-blowing at first. Like, I don't, I don't have any place to learn that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is uh, by far, the I think, the easiest <laughs> diet to learn because if it's got fat, and it, you know, you find the flavors that taste good, you really end up with um, the list in your head. And then, then that chart doesn't mean much, but it will mean so much to the next person saying, what do you mean, what's on a keto, what do you eat on a keto diet? The other one is the uh, food guide, and we'll show you that when we're at the grocery store. All right. These food guides work great for beginners. Put one on the fridge and take the other one with you to restaurants or shopping. Find them at bozmd.com.